Welcome to the EKG Guy. I'm glad you're joining us if this is your first time, and welcome back if you're returning. In this lecture, we're going to look at multifocal atrial tachycardia, or MAT. Now, for those of you that don't have access, in order to get access to our EKG coding reference guide, which we've been going through, you simply want to put this link into your URL, enter your email here, click Submit. You'll get an email and a link. Click on that link and you'll get access to our reference guide. We completed part one. Now we're here in part two and we're looking at multifocal atrial tachycardia. So if you click this scroll down, you'll be able to follow along. For those of you that are returning, simply put your email in, click submit, and you'll have access. So this is just for that first time. Okay. Those interested in our courses and lectures and books and all can go to the website at www.ekg. MD. Okay, and you can find all our things there. But let's get started. So multifocal atrial tachycardia, or MAT, okay, this results when you have at least three different P wave morphologies with an atrial rate greater than 100 beats per minute. Okay, so let's take a look at what's actually happening here. So if you imagine your heart, okay, these are our box diagrams we use. This is your right atrium your left atrium, your right ventricle, and left ventricle. You have your conduction system with your sinus node up here, the internodal pathways, the Bachmann bundle to the left atrium. From your AV node, you have a His bundle that subdivides into a right bundle branch that innervates the right ventricle. You have a left bundle branch that then gives off a left anterior and a left posterior fascicle. Okay, and those fascicles in the uh, branch on the right side then go to these ventricular Purkinje fibers that innervate the individual cardiomyocytes. Okay, so the impulse normally starts up here in the sinus node or the sinal atrial node and then conducts downwards through that. Now, what's happening is when you have this multifocal, so you have different foci or different areas within the atria, okay, as the name implies, multiple focal areas in the atria that are beating fast, okay? So they're coming, they could be coming from the sinus node, but often, if you can imagine, one coming from this area, initiating an impulse. You may have one coming from this area here. You may have one coming from here. You may have one from here. But you want at least three different areas within the atria that are firing. Okay, and because the focus or the impulse is originating from at least three different areas, you're going to have at least three different P wave morphologies. Remember, the atrial depolarization represents our P wave. So that P wave that you see, okay, this portion here is our P wave. It represents atrial depolarization. So if you have three different P wave morphologies or three different areas that are you know, firing, you can imagine that you have three different morphologies where may, one may look like this, one may look like this, one may have some different uh, morphologies. So you can imagine uh, the different variations. So this criteria for this one um, is met when you have at least three Okay, so at least three different morphologies, and you need the atrial rate. Okay, so the atrial rate should be over 100 beats per minute. Okay, why is that important? Well, if you just have this portion here, this is considered wandering atrial pacemaker. When you add this portion with a fast atrial rate, that's what makes it that combination of the two makes it MAT, multifocal atrial tachycardia, okay? So as the name implies, multiple foci within the atria are firing fast, okay? So at least three different P wave morphologies with an atrial rate of 100 beats per minute. Now this is an irregularly irregular rhythm, just like an atrial fibrillation and wandering atrial pacemaker, because it's occurring at different areas, okay, within the atria, you're going to have different intervals. And if you look here, you would notice that our R to R intervals are all pretty much different. And it almost looks like atrial fibrillation until you look closer and you're able to identify those P waves that are present there. Okay. And notice that these P waves have different morphologies. One's occurring there. Okay. One may be buried here with the T wave. Okay. But notice that they have different morphologies 
and they're not all the same and there's at least three different ones so we've, we've already pointed out quite a few uh, the rhythm is irregular okay in the intervals because they are originating from different areas the length or duration to get to that AV node in the PR interval therefore will be different. So you have varying P to P and PR intervals because it's originating from different areas and this is an irregularly irregular rhythm. Okay, similar to atrial fibrillation. Remember, atrial fibrillation is still the most common irregularly irregular uh, rhythm, but this is certainly one to keep in mind. Okay, so again, the rate is fast here. You can count all those P waves because some of them are buried within the QRS complex, okay, or within the end of the T wave, okay, it may be hard to see. In some cases, maybe like this, you can count the QRS complexes, okay, then you can multiply six and uh, get the rate here. But the rate is obviously greater than 100 beats per minute, okay and you have at least three different P wave morphologies. Now, this is, tends to be associated with lung conditions, okay? People with chronic obstructive lung disease like COPD, uh, emphysema, pulmonary edema, core pulmonale, those that are hypoxic, you may see this in. So really, your sick patients with really bad lung disease are the ones that we tend to see this in, all right? So again, let's just uh, recap here. Multifocal atrial tachycardia, also known as MAT, has at least three different P-wave morphologies because you have three different areas, okay, one, two, three, at a minimum, okay, that are firing within the atria at a fast rate over 100 beats per minute in our adult patients. You have varying P to P uh, NPR intervals because there's different areas that are firing. You have an irregularly irregular rhythm, and it's a fast one. And that's what's differentiating it from wandering atrial pacemaker, okay, where the rate is not as fast as this, okay, less than 100 beats per minute, uh, but at least three different P wave morphologies. So once you add that atrial rate and you have at least the three different morphologies, you're dealing with MAT, okay? Again, most commonly seen with our patients with severe lung disease, uh, really bad controlled COPD uh, or, or emphysema, okay? So this is multifocal atrial tachycardia, and that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here so you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so and that's more on youtube there's another 100 more than 100 about 200 videos that are available with the course so those are separate videos and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference.
Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there. Very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who is the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic, in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself um, 25% off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.